everyone, welcome back. It's Christine again with the Artist Pod. So when we talk about eyes, and, and it doesn't matter if it's cat eyes or human eyes, any eyes, right? Like they're so important to get right. When we are looking at images or pictures, the first thing we're drawn to is faces. But if all you're looking at is the face, the first thing we're really gonna connect with and engage with is the eyes. So being able to get the eyes right and sort of engaging with your viewer can be so important to adding the right element to get people fascinated by your art. So let's get started. All right, so we um, drew Spike out, right? Like we did that um, last time. So now we're going to add in his eyes. So I've already started a new layer and we're just gonna come in here and add his eyes. So I know I mentioned before, when you're trying to get something to look at you, you wanna trend in more than you think you should. So let's see, we want him and Spike had green eyes. So after we do the initial circle, circle for his pupils, we'll go ahead and fill out the green. And we'll fill out the whole space, typically, unless that animal doesn't have um, that look to them. But where they don't have uh, some, some, um, some animals, you'll have some white in their eyes, just like with humans, but it's not really true for cats. I mean, a little bit, but nothing that we really need to show. And again, like with any sketch, I'm not putting a lot of pen pressure here. Not yet. All right, so we can see one actually looks a little bigger than the other. So what I always do to make sure they're completely circular is I will come in and cat's eyes tend to be a little bit not as circular. So I'm actually gonna dip down a little bit further than how I originally drew him. So now we'll start another layer. And so the upper bit, you can see that that wasn't connected. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make that strong um, highlight on that side of his pupil. And then I'm just going to color it in. So it's gonna be a strong highlight all the way underneath, right? So it's on not just the side that the uh, light source is on, but it'll follow it down. So there's one eye, although he looks kind of miffed. I might have to change his expression a little bit, but we'll see how it goes once I do the other one. All right, same thing over here. I'm gonna start with that harsh kind of highlight here. And then start filling it in. I know it can take a lot of time because you want to make sure that it's not jarring and that the transitions all seem like they make sense. The way it's shadowed and highlighted makes sense. There's not like a weird gap of shadow or highlight somewhere that isn't feathered out. All right, so there we go. We could end it here. I am gonna go ahead and save it, but I'm gonna see about changing his expression just a little. First of all, I think there's a weird, there's a weird gap here. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. Yeah, that looks better. So all I did there, which I actually wasn't certain how that was gonna turn out, <laughs> I'm glad I did, was I just spread out those lines there, right? Um, it's the same trick I use when I'm trying to feather out a color transition when I have an animal's mouth who's open and I have like the tongue, I'll spread out the lines as it goes back into his throat. Um, and so that's all I did for, for his eyes there. Uh, right, and now one of the most important things to do 
when you're doing eyes is to add the, uh, the flare. I always do it on the eye that's kind of partly in shadow first so that I know I can place it right. So I'll do a nice size one. We'll have that part way up. Always on the opposite side of the line I place against the pupil. And then we're just going to fill it in. Do the same thing on this side. Now, the key to making it look balanced is making sure it's roughly in the same spot of the pupil. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same height as the first one as long as it's the same height relative to the pupil position. Yeah, that's better. There we go. That is how we do his eyes. If we wanted to, we could add a splash of color. Uh, I don't know that I do want to, but let's see how that would look. If I wanted to add, if I were taking green, I'd probably go with a splash of yellow, but I'd make it brighter. Now, I'd put it just slightly inside here so that it's catching that light. And see it makes that a little bit brighter. Do the same thing on this side. And then if we also wanted to, we could add in those squiggles. Right? And then we pull back. You can kind of you can kind of see it. Ideally it's gonna give a little burst of light underneath basically where the light would be catching, right? Oh, that was a little too much. Right there, yeah. This one looks fine. You can see all I'm doing is quick, quick motions. And you have some extra effect to the eye. Now let's do it on this other side. I'm always making sure my lines are going straight in at the pupil. And then as I come into the shadowed side, I lessen them out by a lot. Still need to be there to be believable, but significantly less. Not nearly as thick. And there we go. So if I take that away, you can see the difference. Again, this isn't something I always do, but in this case it works and it it does rely on you choosing the right sort of color to complement the color you're already you know working with all right so that is how you draw cat eyes all right so that is how you draw cat eyes if you wanted to learn more about drawing the different cat bits i have videos over here kind of in this floating nether next to me uh, and i will see you all soon in the next video so take care